Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again. In today's video, my neighbor tries to start an HOA and ends up removing the walls of my house, which results in my house collapsing. Here is what happened. And the first one starts like this. Where I live in Asia, we don't actually have HOAs, but for lack of another term, I will just use it. It's the same concept where you can give monthly money to them and they claim they will use the money to help the neighborhood. It actually happening that way can be hit or miss with a lot of stories regarding stolen money or even the HOA turning into almost a gang. I wanted no part of it because I don't make a ton of money and I cannot justify just giving it to people on the hope that it might benefit me in some unspecified way. Despite not being a part of it, they figured that they could still control me in some way. They made a huge list of rules that they expected everybody to follow. That might be fine for the people that were actually members, but since I did not join, I did not see any reason for me to follow the rules. A lot was basic courtesy that culture taught us all to do at a young age. Some were more specific, but the one that is important was the rule regarding the home color. They had a list of acceptable colors for painting both the outside and inside of homes and anything aside from that list is not allowed. I am what a lot of people might call eccentric, I call it being creative and since it does not affect anybody else, there's nothing wrong with it. Starting with the outside of my house, three of the walls are white which are totally acceptable. For one of the side walls I decided to go all out one day and paint a mural on the wall. A ton of different colors that I'll even admit don't go well together. Still, I own the house and if I ever wanted to sell, I could cover it up. The HOA did not like the wall and told me several times to cover it up, which I refused since I don't have to listen to them. The real kicker came with what they told me about a few days after that. HOA, we wanted to talk about your wall colors. Me, I told you before that I can keep my mural since I'm not a member of your organization. You cannot force your rules on me. HOA, we were talking about the walls inside your house. We can see at least a couple of them are lavender, which is not an acceptable color on our list either. We are adding that to the things you need to change to meet our standards. I knew the walls they were talking about and it meant at least one of them had looked through my windows, which made me feel very uncomfortable. I did not have proof though, so I didn't want to pursue anything unless they continued to harass me about the wall colors and joining. For now, it was a little neighborhood dispute and nothing legal. Not long after that interaction, I got sick and I started to feel some intense abdominal pain. It got to the point that I was on the bathroom floor sick and I needed to call an ambulance to be taken to the hospital. They found that some of my intestines had a blockage and blood was not flowing to them. They had to remove a portion of my intestines in a surgery. After that surgery, I ended up getting a bad infection, which kept me at the hospital even longer. It was miserable and kind of gross, so I will spare you any further details. In case anybody was wondering, by the time I got out, I was totally fine and I'm okay now. While I was sick, the HOA woman decided to take advantage of me being in the hospital by fixing my house herself. Gossip spread fast and she knew that I was not going to be home for a while. You might think that she painted over my wall or even broke into my house to paint the indoor walls as well. Well, that would make even too much sense for somebody like her and instead she decided the entire wall must go. So she had the entire walls removed and without it the house structure could not hold and the entire thing collapsed. I came out of the hospital to my house being gone because she decided to get the walls removed. The first thing I wanted to know was how the hell she managed to get anybody to agree to remove the side of my home. That's not something you can do yourself, you need professionals with tools and equipment. By the way, just to clarify, in case some people were wondering, she did not only remove some of the walls, but she also damaged the overall structure of the house, which I suppose led to the collapse. So it turns out she had a cousin that ran a construction business and convinced him to remove the wall. I was beyond angry and I sued the HOA for the cost of my entire home and what it would be to rebuild. In court was actually how I found out who she had to tear down and I decided to sue her cousin too because he had no right to do that and it went against the law. Just starting with that, first I got a small settlement and his business got shut down because of that and a few other instances the court found they did illegally. Back to the HOA lady though, she was trying to argue in court that she didn't need to pay me for the house. Now, she actually wanted to settle and claimed that she would take responsibility and pay for the one wall he destroyed. Just the one wall claiming it wasn't her fault it being taken down caused the rest of the house to collapse. 
She also wanted to offer an amount that was so small it did not even equate to replacing a wall. She was acting as if she put a hole through the wall or just broke a window. The scale of what she did was not in her mind. I refused to take that money and I instead wanted to sue her for the full amount I deserved. She claimed in court that her rules for the neighborhood demanded the certain colors and I didn't comply with those rules. I was not a member and she could not dictate anything about my property. Not to mention she was already found guilty of destruction of property for my home. So she had to pay me in the end around $475,000. This would cover the cost of my house and expenses for me needing somewhere to stay since I obviously could not live in the rubble. For the destruction of property, she was sent to prison. I don't know if she could have gotten a lighter sentence, but her seeming to have no remorse and to the end claim that she was in the right did not help her either. She really claimed that it was my fault for having my wall be that color and not listening to her. At least I don't need to hear her comments anymore since I would never go visit her in prison. As for my house, I did get it rebuilt and just to spite the HOA that was left I decided all the walls needed a ton of color. It looks a little like a mess, but it is growing on me. And yeah, Ripe stars, these HOAs, or rather the equivalent of what they are here in Asia, seem to be, at least in some parts of the continent, just as bad as the ones in America. Either way, if you like the HOA stories, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even leave a comment because that would make me and Disney very happy. Thank you so much. The next one is a petty revenge story. It starts like this. My granddad used to own a piece of land next to a horse track. Their land almost surrounded my granddad's except for him having access to a heavily trafficated public road. The racetrack was laid out in such a way that their exercise track was placed north on my granddad's land while the main track with the stadium was placed to the south. Way back when the racetrack was built, they had asked my granddad if they could transport their horses across his land. There was already a maintenance road in place and as they only moved their horses, he did not really mind as they also supported the local village. As a small thank you for this, they allowed him and his guests to watch the races for free and normally it cost around 5 US dollars in our local currency, not that much but it allowed him to take me and all my cousins to watch the horses for free. Anyhow, fast forward a couple of years and my granddad passed away. My mother who inherited the land tried to bring her grandchild, my niece, to the racetrack to see the horses just as my granddad used to do. At the counter she is told that she now has to pay for admission, not really that big of a deal as she thought that they didn't know that she now owned the land. Afterwards, however, when she rides to the track to rectify the situation, they tell her that she won't be admission free as it was a one-time deal they had struck with my granddad that was now off. So enter the petty revenge. A few months later when we had planned to cut down some of the trees for lumber, my mother told the contractors to accidentally leave one or two logs across the maintenance road. The racetrack now having to load their horses on trolleys as they had to use the busy public road instead of our maintenance one almost immediately sent an email to my mom apologizing and offering her that same deal as my granddad had received if we would remove the locks. She only informed them that the one time deal they had struck with my granddad was off. In the end, after some wrangling, we ended up with a deal where they now have to pay my mom around $400 every month in addition to her and her guests having free admission. And here Ripe stars, that's exactly how you get petty revenge. Props to that mom, she is an absolute legend. Either way, the next one is a malicious compliance story. So I lived with an entitled roommate and her brother for a year. Well, almost a year before I was kicked out. Let me set this up a bit. She is disabled with a chronic autoimmune disease. She is on disability and doesn't work, her brother hasn't worked a job ever as far as I'm aware, so he is on welfare. He was a nomad for 9 years and came to live with his sister when she was diagnosed a year before I met them and moved in. I know, I'm honestly kind of an idiot for not seeing the signs. For what it's worth, I work full time, we got along quite well, in general, it didn't really bother me that they would take my food, coffee, pasta, butter, milk, eggs, cheese, etc, you name it, or that I was often asked to take care of the dishes even though 80% of them were hers and her brother's, not mine. I felt for her and was fine with helping them out. The problem was, I was happy. I was working hard, making money, writing music and starting a new romantic relationship with an old friend. She was not happy, I would give her gifts and food and friendship, but it wasn't enough to counter her jealousy and I guess something just snapped. I came home on March 20th and before the door had even closed behind me she said, please OP, you need to move out. Why? You just do. 
This is my house. She paid the same rent I did and was often late. My brother works hard at being her caretaker, I guess, and he deserves his own room. There were only two rooms, mine and hers, and he lived in our living room. So you just need to figure something out. So here comes my malicious compliance. I knew she expected me to stay for April. She and her brother would really have to squeeze their funds to make it work to pay the upcoming full rent. Her brother didn't pay while I lived there. But was I about to stay in the home for 5.5 grueling weeks with someone who had randomly turned on me, kicked me out of my home and in retrospect guilted me into giving them household help and free food? I don't think so. I applied for 30 houses that day alone, by the weekend I had signed a new lease. If you ask me to get out, no problem, I'll be out ASAP. I got my security deposit back from my landlord who passed that info on to my roommate. She stormed into the kitchen, her, so you just got your security deposit, do you have somewhere else to live? Me, yeah, I signed a lease yesterday and I have arrangements to move all my stuff two days from now. Her, so you're not paying for April? Me, no, that was the last time we ever talked. She stormed out of the room, said a few choice words about me to her brother and slammed the front door. I almost felt like she expected me to hand her a $800 gift wrapped and still get out of her space. I did not stay in my room ever again, I moved out quickly and quietly and I have not heard from her since. Don't tell me to move if you're not ready to pay the full rent. Bye Felicia. And the next one is another malicious compliance story. I had the unique displeasure of working in customer service over 7 years. My longest job was at a bowling alley in a mid-sized town. It was the high-end bowling alley in the town and thus attracted some pretty entitled people. While I got pretty good at zoning out their dumb requests and simply complying, there were a few times that malicious compliance was warranted. So, backstory, the bowling alley required people to purchase bowling by time, in other words $20 per hour etc. So when I turned on the lane, the bowlers got a 5 minute buffer period in addition to their time purchased. Most of the time this was not an issue and people came and left with no issue. Upon request, however, people could get an extra 15 minutes for free in the case of mechanical issues or large groups that were in the 8th frame or higher. I bet you can imagine where this goes bad. So the main story, one day a family that consisted of a dad, two daughters and mother came in and started a tap with one hour, we let them open taps since we had servers and food service too. The kids were younger, but I had seen this dad in the bowling alley before as he played in one of our leagues. He was one of those just snobby looking bowling guys with a rolling bowling bag, beat up bowling balls and huge belly that seemed to go in hand with the pro bowlers that came to this alley. He had scammed a lot of free stuff from us before and we had actually been warned about him as employees. Fast forward an hour and his time is almost up when all of a sudden I hear a large crash. It was the sound that a bowling ball makes when it hits the sweep that wipes the pins off the lane. There is a small window of time that a bowler can hit the sweep while it's clearing pins and of course the dad I discussed earlier was the one that hit it. He comes bumbling over and tells me the lane is broken. I could clearly see that the lane was broken because the lane monitor screen had the code for a jammed arm. I apologized while holding back the barf in my mouth and called the mechanic. After doing that he demanded 15 minutes of free time since he had to wait for the mechanic to fix the lane which took 2 minutes. Since it was his first incident I gave it to him. That was my first mistake, this happened again a second time when his time was getting low as he had just started a new game. He came bumbling over and did the same routine, I regrettably gave the second set of time to him for free and then he went away. As you may have guessed it happened a third time. This time however I decided to charge him for the 15 minutes since I knew what he was up to and our policy posted on the front counter that every customer agrees to specifically states that we only give 15 minutes for free and on the fourth time the guy came over again and I charged him again. This happened a total of 5 times and I charged him for 3. When he finally decided to pay out he saw his bill and got furious. He came thundering over to me and barked at me saying that I was wrong and that he needed to see my manager. When my manager came out he gave his side of the story which of course was about how I was an idiot and that our lanes break way too easily. I then gave my side and calmly explained that I gave him more free time than our policy stated and that due to his continued requests for more time I gave it to him at cost. My manager then asked to see the tab and look through it. Not only did my manager agree that I was right but he also made the guy pay for the second set of 15 minutes that I had originally given to him for free. 
My manager cited our policy and told the man what he needed to pay. After some intense yelling, the guy cursed us out, vowed to never come back and left. He came back for League 3 days later, he knew what he was doing that day and was just mad he got caught. The next one is titled Garbage Issues. I worked in civil services in one of the most dangerous cities in my state. A city of only 300,000 but with two or three murders a month and violent crime several times a day, every day. So while I understand little things can be annoying, the city has more important things to do than paying somebody to drive 25 minutes across town to deal with ridiculous neighborhood bickering, especially when there were not enough hours in the day to help all the people who called with action problems. That being said, the city had a policy of responding to every single citizen's call regardless of how stupid and wasteful it was. One day a call came across my computer from an anonymous caller. I will call her Patty Betty, reporting the neighbor across the street that had left their empty garbage cans at the curb for 4 hours after pickup and the caller demanded the owner be cited for it. The caller was listed as refused and non-contact which means just like it sounds. The person wanted me to do their dirty work but were too chicken crap to speak to me like an adult about their concerns. So across town I drove and as I barely slowed down while driving past the offending can I cleared the call by typing yes can confirm. There are in fact two cans sitting in the gutter as described but cannot confirm with non-contact RP what time garbage was picked up. So call closed. Also noted numerous other unrelated cans left out in the neighborhood. About 10 minutes go by and another call comes in from irate Patty Betty stating she had watched me drive away without even stopping to do my job and investigate things. Betty knows the law and demands the homeowner be cited for the eyesore. She even mentioned the correct obscure city ordinance stating cans could not be out 4 hours after pickup. Oh boy, you sure caught me, Betty, so back I go. This time I get out and as I am pulling the cans back 3 whole feet so they are on the owner's grass and in technical compliance, I give a little finger wave towards Betty's home just so she knows that I know that she is peeping out the curtains and then I leave. Not the most professional thing to do but there was no way I was citing some poor neighbor for stupid garbage cans but I was over it and on to other things without another thought. But like an annoying gnat that won't leave you alone, a few minutes later I get a private heads up message from a concerned co-worker that Patty Betty was calling to file a complaint with my supervisor. And sure enough later that day I had a good laugh when my supervisor blamed me for making him snort laugh as Patty Betty described my passive aggressive wave towards her house and it pissed her off that he didn't care about the cans either. Now the super petty revenge part. Every time I drove by that house and the cans were out, I stopped to move them to the edge of the lawn just to piss off Petty Betty and I waved each and every time. I hope she saw me. Edit, I should have been more clear about the stupid 4 hour thing, it's an obscure never used ordinance and in all my years there this was the one and only time I ever heard or thought about it. The only reason I moved the cans was to make a point and to piss Patty Betty off. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. You know what I don't see too many stories of around here? Ones where the crazy neighbor is old instead of a typical Karen age. Maybe it does not happen as often but I can tell you that at least for me I had an insane neighbor who was a single man in his 60s. So maybe not super old but older than most of the neighbor stories I have read about. Maybe it's a cultural thing and only crazy older men live here in Latvia. Either way I wanna tell everyone about this guy who bought the house next to me a while back and then months later started building this shed slash utility building. I'm not really sure what I would call it because it was like another mini building on his property but I think he was just using it for storage. The only issue with it was that it was going over the property line and onto my land. It was not just an inch over but pretty much half of this building was now sitting on my property and I was not happy about it. We were not in a rural area so we did not really have giant properties or anything to begin with so with him doing this I was feeling a little bit cramped. 
I thought that maybe he did not know where the property line was supposed to be, so I thought I would be nice and go on over to let him know before the building was finished. This way he could adjust things and move it over or make it a little bit smaller. Me, hey there, I was hoping you had a minute to talk about what you are building over here. Neighbor, what's it to you? Want to sneak onto my land and get a good look at what I'm doing, huh? He was really grumpy and also had a bit of a creepy tone to his voice that I cannot really explain with words. I was a little taken back at his sudden response though. Me, it is just that the property line is actually over here and as you can see the building is going quite a bit over that line. I just thought that you would want to know before it was done and then you could move it. Neighbor, now look here, I'm not going to be moving this for nobody. You think that you're entitled to anything you want, but let me tell you something. This is my home and if I want to build something, I'm not going to let someone like you tell me that I cannot. Me, I don't want you to stop building it, I just don't want it being built on my side of the property line. Neighbor, you better get yourself away from me and my land right now. If I see you over here again, I swear that I will kill you. This threat did its job in scaring me and before I knew it I was slinking away back to my home. While I did not like him doing it, this was not worth getting myself killed over fighting with him. Instead I sent for the town to send me blueprints of where the property line is so that I could have written proof that it was on my land. It was all in the system so there was no need for an actual inspector and this made me glad considering how crazy this guy was. While I waited for that I just watched from my home as his building was finished. I noticed that going in and out of that building he would always be storing and taking out guns. I never really liked guns but my father was in the military and taught me a little bit about them. The thing is that like most places some guns are legal if you have a permit and some you cannot have no matter what. I was seeing some of those types by the building so I had a strong feeling all of his guns were illegal. That scared me even more now since he threatened to kill me that I knew he had the weapons to actually do it. The report came back and I was right that the thing he built was just about halfway onto my property and half on his. I had to figure out what I wanted to do about it though. I wanted to report him for it without getting myself shot in the process. So instead of the town I went to the police station and told them the entire story about him building illegally and me being too scared to try and get it sorted because he threatened to kill me. I also told them he was using that building to store guns, some of which I was able to identify as illegal and they were willing to help me with the matter. I went back home with one officer and the others went to the neighbor's house with a warrant they got to search the building. He did not want them but had no choice as they walked in and saw all of his illegal guns. That plus the verbal threat of killing me was enough to arrest him for both things and he was put in the back of the car and sent to jail as the cops confiscated all of his guns. Going back to the building though I was now able to contest that it was on my land without the fear of the neighbor. I won and he was given a week to take care of the situation before I was allowed to take matters into my own hands. The only problem was he was in jail and had nobody on the outside to help him handle things. So I got to be in charge and I knew what I wanted to do with the building. I could not tear the entire thing down since it was not all on my property but instead I hired somebody to follow the property line exactly and cut his new building in half the entire way across. I have to say that it is very satisfying to watch a guy take a chainsaw and slice an entire building right down the middle. It also gave me a chance to be a little nosy and see exactly what else was in there besides the guns that got taken away. I wish that it could have been something cool but it was empty and I could just see spaces that were designed to hold guns. So he really was just building a fancy looking gun shed. The joke is really on him though because he has no guns now and his building to store them is ripped right down the center and useless. Under normal circumstances I would say he could build another wall and try to fix it but I think that will be a problem. The number of charges he has against him are huge and I think any money he has is going to a lawyer to try and keep him from spending the rest of his life in jail. He had so many illegal guns that I just know he is not going to have a good defense enough to get him out of it all. 
I've got no idea if he got sent to prison or for how long, but I can tell you one thing. His house was never put on sale and his half of the building stood for a while. Then it rained and got so gross with animals trying to live inside of it that the town took the rest down as a matter of public safety. And yeah, ripe stars, I would hope that this entitled neighbor learned his lesson, because obviously he lost quite a bit of property in this conflict. Either way, I'm curious, if you ever had issues with your own neighbors, then I would really appreciate it if you could share your own stories either in the comments or on r slash ripe stories on reddit where you can post your own stories. Furthermore, I would also appreciate it if you could like the video, because that would help my channel tremendously. Thank you so much in advance. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.